sisters and brothers. Brazilian workers face critical challenges since the coronavirus outbreak started. We will learn about this experience through six reports from workers themselves. Irene Maestro addresses worker self-organization inside poor neighborhoods. Uh, hello, my name is Irene Maestro. I'm, I'm a member of Luta Popular, which is a people's movement that organizes poor people in working class neighborhoods and carries out scratching in empty areas or building for housing. Now we are new challenges. Now, now we are facing new challenges uh, due to coronavirus outbreak. Half uh, of the working class have casual, casual jobs. They work today to eat today. Due to coronavirus, they lost their income. Uh, without any support from the government, people are already starving. Overcrowded housing without sanitation and no reg regular provision of tap, of tap water makes quarantine harder, nearly impossible. Our politic is, uh, is working class self-organization. We published a pamphlet with orientations about the coronavirus, what should be done as individuals and as collective, uh, there are demands uh, for the authorities and proposal for the community to self-organize. We organize national campaigns to collect food, uh, toiletries, clean, cleaning stuff to the communities in struggle. We also build links with agricultural work, workers movement, peasant organizations to bring organic products directly to the communities in the cities and we distribute them and we share them with neighbors. There are uh, some of basic actions to self-organize and to build solidarity among the working class to fight back coronavirus and cap in capitalism. Solidarity forever. Marcelo Azevedo tells us about the increase in domestic violence. The coronavirus arrived in Brazil, increasing social inequities and oppression. Domestic violence cases soared reaching 50% more in cities like Rio de Janeiro. Domestic workers, mostly black women, continue to be forced to work, even if it costs their lives. The government have absurd proposals to return it to circulation of people to save their economy. And the president, who during a whole year of terms didn't invest a pen in Policies for human victims of violence use it, use it this sad reality to justify the end of quarantine. We end a paid learning so there are no essential services stay at home. We want a national emergency plan against gender violence with a public investment in policies to support victims. Antônio Gonçalves reports about Bolsonaro administration's attacks on public education. Hello, I am Antônio Gonçalves, president of the National Syndicate of Higher Education Teachers in Brazil, Andes SN, affiliated to CSP com Lutas. I would like to share with you a little of the struggles of public servants. Here in Brazil, civil servants whether from the union, states and municipalities, are selected in a, a isometric way uh, from a public tender and after three years gain functional stability. This rule was introduced in federal constitution in 1980s. Uh, since then, uh, successive governments have tried to withdraw uh, such rights uh, with the election of a far-right government, the neoliberal program has advanced more quickly. They approved a public pension reform that was very damaging uh, to the working class as a rule. With the emergence of the coronavirus pandemic, they are trying to reduce wages and promote mass layoffs. In education, the project is to limit access to knowledge to the most vulnerable sections of society, uh, focusing on some content such as mathematics and Portuguese, aimed at the labor market. Universities have guaranteed autonomy in the constitution 
but the federal government has made cuts in the budget of higher education institutions and chosen academic rectors not elected by academic communities. The teaching category and that of Brazilian working class, with the articulation of CSP com lutas, which is a central that, that brings together unions and popular movements, have made several struggles to defeat the ultra-liberal project and advance a project that is of interest of the working class. Thank you very much. Eduardo Henrique addresses wage cuts and union busting in the oil giant Petrobras. Hello, workers from all over the world. My name is Eduardo Henrique and I am a member of the Oil Workers National Federation. We'd like to call attention of everyone about what has been happening in Petrobras these days. Petrobras is the most important company of Brazil, employs hundreds of thousands of workers, and its profit, profit summed up $40 billion last year. What role should play Petrobras in this pandemic? More than ever, people need gas to cook the food, need gasoline for the ambulance, need diesel to transport food and to the hospital generators. Unions have demanded that Petrobras should reduce the activities to the very necessary to combat COVID-19. The government and director board of Petrobras refuse to negotiate with the workers, refuse to take wide and quickly the steps necessary to combat the COVID-19. More than this, worse than this, they attack now in the, in the middle of the pandemic, they attack workers trying to dismiss those who participated in the strike of the beginning of the year, cut off up to 50% of the salary of 3,200 operational works, cut off 25% of the salary of more than 20,000 workers now in the middle of the pandemic, but at the same time keep the whole salary of the, manage, the, the managers, multiply the bonus they will pay for themselves in the in this year. So we count on you to spread the truth of the facts that is happening nowadays in Petrobras and tell everyone that oil works want to step back. Herbert Claros talks about workers strikes for the right to stay at home on paid leave. Hello, my name is Herbert. I am an aerospace worker for Embraer. Embraer is a Brazilian craft manufacturer and I'm a leader of a metal workers union that is affiliated to CSP Con Lutas in Brazil. The coronavirus has affected hard workers hard. While the, vi the virus spreads to the cities and countries, some governments resort to quarantine and uh, social isolation measures. This is correct, but governments and the bourgeois keep the factories running and, the, and we all know that factories are a large concentration of the people. Here in, this, in the region of San José dos Campos, uh, the union called a general strike in the region. Uh, so that factories are stopped and workers stay at home uh, receiving their wages and jobs protected. In the country, uh, several companies are stopping production due to the pressure from the unions. But this is not a government decision. Now, the main call of CSP Con Lutas is for the government to stop the factories that do, produce, uh, that to do not produce essential goods or convert them to essential goods like respirators. 
Now is not a time for profit. Now is time for life and works life matter. Fabio Bosco describes transit workers' challenges for a safe workplace. Transit workers face a dramatic challenge in Brazil. On the one side, public transportation is considered an essential service. Currently, even under partial lockdown, every day there are one million commuters in Sao Paulo's subway. On the other side, workers don't have enough PPEs, like hand sanitizer, mask or gloves, and workers on license due to either possible infection or for being older than 60 are losing part of their earnings. The union stands for a special plan, leaving only major stations close to hospitals open, exclusively for workers in hospitals, drugstores, or supermarkets. And the union also stands for full paid license and PPEs for all workers, both regular or casual. CSP com lutas stands for international solidarity among the working class and the oppressed. This video is meant to exchange experience and improve workers' international struggles for emancipation.